morning everyone. I am dressed up very fancy because I was just trying this dress on. This is from a new collection with Karen Millen. Not my collection, this is a collection with um, an illustrator or a, um, it's a botanical artist and I loved this dress so much that I got it in both colours. Such good quality. If you can hear Porter barking, this is what Ali has created, okay. Mr I don't want a dog has spoilt them so much that he's barking at the food that's on the island. Now I was so careful with Porter to not get him like this and he is such a nightmare. Literally, Porter is now trying to get up onto the table some evenings. I'm gonna have to put my foot down with it because Ali is such a soft touch, it is unbelievable. Anyway, I think he might have um, calmed down now. Have some water. I am actually not going to be wearing this today, although I might wear it this evening. I'm going um, to a new place with Carrie for drinks. We're going to Olney to have drinks this evening. We thought we'd try somewhere different and um, I've obviously not seen her because we've, uh, I've been away. I've seen her at work but not in a friend capacity so we've got a lot of catching up to do and so we're going to do that tonight. But today I am actually going to Bista. I'm going to see my aesthetician, Dr Ayad, and I'm going to see him this evening. Um, for a procedure. First of all, I'm having my hydrofacial, which I'm looking forward to. It's my first hydrofacial since I've been back from holiday, and um, I'm looking forward to having the glow. It's the perfect facial for like no downtime, but beautiful skin, and it's really become part of my, like, my routine. You watched me fall in love with this treatment. It is by far my most favorite, so I'm going to have that done. But I'm also going to have a treatment that I've been having done for, I think it must be about a year, I think, I think that's how long it must be. I'm sure I'll be corrected if, if that's not the case. But I think it's been about a year. And I generally, I've spoken about two procedures that I've had on this channel in terms of like aesthetics. So I had my non-surgical nose job done around about seven years ago. Seven, six, no. No, I had it, that's way over egging the pudding, Lydia. I had it done four years ago because I had it done just before my wedding, I believe. Yeah, a couple of months just before my wedding. I had that done and I spoke about it on my channel because I really felt like I could um, offer some insight into it and um, it was something I didn't know a lot about and I hadn't heard of until I asked someone. I was like, my gosh, you've got like the most perfect nose. And they're like, well, actually I had a non-surgical nose job. Anyway, so I had that done. I actually haven't had it topped up for, I think about two years. So this is still just like as is. And I spoke about it because I really wanted to like, just offer some insight into it. And I, I like to think that I, I'm able to bring value to things. And just like speaking about my um, recent surgery that I had done, I really felt like I could offer A, some insight into how important it is to obviously research and um, do things right and um, just make good choices with things. Because obviously the regret that I lived with because of mine and not doing enough, I felt, to make sure that I got exactly what I wanted. And obviously pointing you in the direction of someone that really, really knows what they're doing in terms of that one. Now, the subject that I want to talk to you about today is one that I've actually wanted to talk to you about for a while. And I always want to be able to bring something to the conversation about it. And after seeing quite a number of my friends go places and have this done, awfully like i've seen really really bad things from what is supposed well what is a fairly routine and widely done procedure and i kind of wanted to point people in the direction of the guy that i go and see ayad because i think he's exceptionally good i'd be able to put, point you in the direction of someone that you're in good hands of now he's got a niche personality and a niche sense of humor so if you follow him on his Instagram, he is a bit niche, but he is incredibly professional and hopefully I can give you some insight into this. Now the reason why I started having this procedure was I saw a study and the study was done on twins. Like one of the twins had the procedure and the other twin didn't. And I was fascinated by these results and it really debunked a lot of the misconceptions that I'd had about this procedure. The procedure that I'm talking about is Botox and I'm sure you would have seen lots of people talk about this online and like I said I just want to feel like I'm bringing value and a different insight rather than just feeling like I need to talk about it in that respect and so 
they did this study and one twin had it for 10 years and the other twin didn't and it showed the remarkable difference in the condition of the skin versus the other twin who had considerably aged a lot more. Now, I am all for, it. like, aging is beautiful and we're so lucky to be able to age and I hate that we feel bad about, like, doing so. I'm not having this procedure because I don't want to get old. I want to get old and I feel really lucky. I would just really like to look as fresh as possible throughout that process. Um, and if there is something that can help me do that, then I'm all for it. And this is something that is relatively, if you go to the right person, easy and carefree to maintain and continue to do and really help your skin in that respect. And so for me, this was, when I saw that study, I went and I did a lot more research. I spoke to Ayan about this. And um, generally I was like, this is a really good help for anti-aging, although I kind of just feel like it's like a help for, for aging rather than anti-aging. So anyway, I'm gonna find the study and I'll link it in the description box down below because it fascinated me, it genuinely did. But there are so many other things that it helps with. So you may have noticed a few, it might have been a few months ago that my lazy eye, which I have a lazy eye, came back. <laughs> I've got one eye that is incredibly lazier than the other one. I'm always like, come on, get up and go to work. It doesn't. And that is one of the other things that you can have corrected, potentially, not everyone, but I am able to have my lazy eye corrected using this procedure as well. So that is one of the other things that really, really interested me about this. And I, I feel like Botox on the whole is a subject that is a bit taboo and it's totally misunderstood. There are instances, like I said, where you can have bad Botox, but it isn't what you think. Like there are those people, those famous pictures of people where they've got like lots of filler and people are like, oh my God, too much Botox. And that's not Botox, that's filler. It's completely different. What Botox does is it essentially like freezes or relaxes the muscle in your face. So it's great for people that have overly expressive faces, which is a very common thing. I remember following Nikki Blacketter and, and seeing her journey with Botox as well. She had a very, very expressive face and she used it to soften that. And it was amazing, the results. I also have followed a number of people that have done the same thing. And I feel like Botox gets such a bad rep. And in reality, it's actually, I would say, if you just want to look fresh, this is a really lovely way to maintain the health of your skin. Obviously, skincare is still a huge, huge factor in this. What you're doing every single day, food is a huge, huge factor of this. Water and drinking enough of it is a huge, huge factor of this as well. But all of these things combined are really, really helpful in order to take care of your skin, help you look your best, not necessarily reverse the signs of aging, but just look your best as you age. This is not an advert for Botox, but I am passionate about the misconceptions that Botox has, and I definitely observed these kinds of things coming out in other people when you say that you have it. And so hopefully, in doing this video, if you've ever had those misconceptions, this might help a little bit. I have mine done, I think it's probably about twice a year, maybe three times, and it really, really does just help. I don't go overboard. There are some people that want like their whole faces frozen. That's not what I want. I still want to be able to be as expressive as possible whilst also maintaining the condition of my skin. I also leave time in between my treatments as well to re-strengthen the muscles in my face. That's really important that you do that as well so that your muscles aren't constantly frozen and end up wasting away. So ensuring that you allow your skin to go back to normal and just move a little bit so you'll see that I'm like moving and everything is like absolutely fine because I want that movement and the, the strength to still be there in the muscles so it needs that. But I am due to have my um, top up of it. So I'm going today, I'm having my facial so it will, and that's another factor of my skincare and looking after myself and just making sure that everything like, I just, I just wanna look fresh. And I think that this is something, I, I, I saw on someone's stories recently where they were like, oh, I'm not planning on having any Botox or anything like that because um, I just, I'm happy with growing old. And that's fine, that is absolutely fine. But I would question that person in why are you using all of those lovely skincare 
products as well because essentially what Botox does is the same kind of thing. It just looks after what is there and makes it look lovely for longer. And so that's just a misconception that I, I saw and I was like, I mean, you see, I feel like you don't understand what it does. And so hopefully this video will help with that. Anyway, 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 anyway. So I'm gonna go there today. I'm not gonna go in this beautiful pretty dress because I think I would be nuts, but I'll probably go in something pretty because the sun is shining. It is a beautiful day. We've got the cushions out. And um, despite the fact that I started the day not on the best foot in regards to basically We've had, since we got back from holiday, our boiler, well, actually since before we left, our boiler has been a nightmare. I feel like this is something that we've had, like, a fair amount. And I didn't mention it because it's just, like, well, the smallest violin. But today it completely stopped working. So, no, yesterday it completely stopped working. And so we've had the plumber out today. It looks like it's probably fixed now, but, um, fingers crossed. But I washed my hair and it just has not gone to plan at all. Like, I feel like it just doesn't feel clean. I've also completely ran out of shampoo and I want to, like, I want to get some new shampoo. I'm thinking about trying the Beauty Pie shampoo, to be honest. In fact, that's another point. My gosh, I'm having such a brain dump here, sorry. If this video feels like it's slightly disjointed, it's because I'm filming this, like, separately. Um, and this will just go live when it's another kind of video. So I'm thinking this will be going live on the Monday. Um, so it might be a little bit out of sync with my other vlogs as well, because I just wanted this to be on its own in a vlog so that it made sense, if that makes sense. So yeah, anyway. So I'm going, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I'm trying to find some shampoo because um, I need to, I need something because it just feels like residue, like it's like really, I used a mask on it today and I was a bit sort of like, I shouldn't have done that when I can't actually wash my hair properly. But on the most part, not too bad. But anyway, we're gonna head there, I'm gonna get freshened up. And um, then this evening, Carrie and I are going out for girly drinks. Hopefully it'll be a lovely and warm afternoon. And can we just please take a moment because I just love this, this entire room. Like it fills me with so much joy. I just sit up here now and I'm like, gosh, it's so lovely. Anyway. I'm gonna get changed out of this beautiful dress and get going. This is the dress that I am wearing today. You may have seen this in my previous vlog from my collection. It does amaze me how many people from my Instagram don't actually watch my YouTube videos because when I put this, I was wearing this on my stories the other day and they were literally like, that dress! And I'm like, guys, if you watched my blooming video, you would have known. But yeah, it's launching soon, I imagine. Could be the next video, is it the next video? I'm not sure, I have no idea where I am. But um, this is a beautiful silk cotton dress. The fabric, this is probably my most favorite fabric. Ooh, although there is one fabric in this collection which I am just like, holy macaroni. But this is just the most beautiful fabric, especially for spring, summer. It is so light, but with the element of silk, it is perfect for days like today where it is sunny outside, but we're still not in the full like thrones of summer so yeah I'm, I'm i think this is perfect and i'm also going to take my bag out for its first outing however i'm annoyed okay i'm annoyed because this is gold okay you can see that this is this is the gold color from Hermes. i'm just going to show you this okay so this is gold and my sandals are also gold but they're a different leather look at the color difference i'm livid <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know why they haven't done the sandals in this leather. I still need to take the sticky things off this. Like, why? Why are they so different? I'm so annoyed. Maybe this will like darken, who knows? But for the moment they actually match my Manolo Blahnik pumps better. And I don't even think they, no, see look, these are all just, oh. hopefully because they're so far apart it won't matter, but I'm wearing sandals and this bag today. And I'm gonna wear, this Penhaligon's Empressa fragrance because I'm just still loving it. We have arrived in the sort of more medical facial area of Dr. Ayad's clinic. Hi, me. And um, we've come in for our hydrofacials <laughs> first and look who is in the hot seat. Someone Hi. is hooked on hydrofacial. When he heard I was coming, he was like, I'm coming too. 
<laughs> Are you gonna do a before and after of your skin? I think you should. Yeah. It was really funny because um, when Ali had it done the first time, Rebecca was like, oh, can you see a difference? And he was like, no. And I was like, Ali will never say that he can see a difference if he can't. And then he got in the car after going outside and seeing it in daylight and he was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Show the world. Good? Yes. Didn't well, they... my Here he is again. I know. <laughs> Tell I, you... I said that when I walked out and was showing you. Yeah, because like now when you're looking at me, I, I can't, like you can't necessarily see the glow now because the light is above you. If you, yeah, see there you can see how nice and glowing yeah, your skin nice. is. It's just like a proper I think refresh. It was just, I looked into a mirror with no light. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the leftovers. Like, oh, yeah. This is one of the satisfying things from having this done. Is you get to see yeah, I was about to say, it yourself. <laughs> My turn. Am I okay to ask you to leave my eye makeup on? Because otherwise it makes me look like a mole. <laughs> a mole! A you can take mole. everything else off. My dog looks like a mole if I remove it. Little doggy! Doggy doo doo. What have we got in the canister? Oh, I sell peel. Oh, wow, it smells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the acid. I don't yeah. think I've had this one before. Have I had this before? We know we do the milk peel, don't we? Ooh, we're having something different. Mm. It's just a combination of glycolic and salicylic acid. Mm. Let that tingle. Yeah, that is tingling. Your skin looks so good. Like your forehead just looks so like hydrated and smooth. How often should you have this treatment? Um, you can have it every four weeks. Um, a lot of my patients will have it every six to eight. So, we are now very fresh faced after my hydrofacial, absolute favorite treatment like ever. Now, I'm going to get ready to head up for a refresh. Hello, old friend. Is ignoring me. <laughs> 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 it's okay, I didn't go red then because I'm red already for my treatment. <laughs> but I'm having my Botox topped up now and I'm also, we've just basically been talking about it and one of the things that I have been considering for a while is having um, Botox in my jaw because the last time I went to the, the dentist they did mention that I had signs of TMJ in my mouth and I have um, obviously documented well on my channel how I've had headaches I've tried lots of different things. I was obviously uh, prescribed amnitriptyline. I stopped taking that very, very quickly. Um, and this is definitely something that I want to explore as well. So it's obviously not gonna stop me being able to like clench my jaw, but hopefully it's going to relieve the way that I um, hold my jaw and like tense it. And hopefully maybe this will relieve a little bit of my headaches. I'm definitely not getting them as badly anymore, but I am still taking uh, paracetamol a lot more than I would like to. So we are gonna get on the bed here at the clinic in Vista. I'll pop all of the details in the description box down below. I know that lots of you already know this one um, because lots of you have come to have your noses done. Um, but this is obviously something that I haven't spoken about before. And I always say that, like I mentioned previously, I always wanna feel like I'm able to bring value with when I'm talking about these things, not just being like, here, you can come and get this done here. I actually want you to understand a bit more about why and how it's helpful and beneficial and as I explained earlier when I saw the like report that they did with the two twins where one had had Botox for 10 years and one hadn't it's actually just really good for keeping you looking fresh for longer I think there's a lot of misconceptions around Botox and people often confuse filler and Botox and they don't understand that actually it's just kind of makes sense if you're using lots of anti-aging products this is just a bit more of an invasive way of prolonging freshness and the condition of your skin over a period of time as well but as Ayad always tells me I obviously have to leave my my Botox sometimes for a while and let my muscles rebuild their strength so I've got some movement now but we're going to get rid of that <laughs> right so what to say about Botox so Botox is actually a brand name Ah yes, that's always the Botox thing that I yeah. And so we mustn't confuse um, a brand with a medicine. Botox is a medicine. Right. It's botulinum toxic. 
and what you find in toxin is a muscle relaxant. It's actually been around for decades. And so it's, it's not a muscle freezer, it's a muscle relaxer, or is it? Well, it, it, its intention is to relax muscle. Right. If you relax it a lot, it'll flatten the muscle dead. Right, okay. okay. And it's been around for decades and decades. It's been used very widely in medicine, in children, in adults, in um, spasticity, in tension, in spasm, all of these things before the cosmetic application came along around right. 30 or so, or so years ago. So the point of Botox is to relax muscle. But unfortunately, with these treatments, people do have a tendency of expecting that if a little bit is good, then more must be better. So yeah. they go and really pile in the Botox, and that will have those very recognizable effects of freezing things. Yes. And people will start to look frozen, sparkled, very unnatural. And actually, over time, if you keep doing that, keep doing that well, it will thin the muscle to such a degree that the skin becomes almost papery. Crepey. Crepey. Yeah. Your skin and muscle need each other, okay? Yes. And the muscle needs to still have some substance about it for the skin to be nice and supported and soft. So we mustn't kill the muscle dead. And that's why I've always um, stressed the point of just leaving time for the muscle to get some practice in, okay? Yeah. And then relaxing it down again. And that way we'll stay on top of it. Okay, and stop the muscle, it's, you're running away with itself yeah. and becoming too strong, too tense. Okay? So what we're going to do, as a general cosmetic application, we're just going to drop, sprinkle a little bit of Botox in the upper face, okay? Calm down any tension in the forehead, around the frown, and around the eyes. And that'll just calm things down. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then we also correct, don't we? Use and then we can also use it in a certain way to just lift up the brows. Okay. You've got a little bit of a, a little bit of asymmetry in the movement here around your, especially the left eye, don't you? So yeah. it scrunches up a little bit more yeah. readily. So we're going to just calm that down so both eyes move and don't move the same. Yeah. Um, and the most important thing is that we're going to just do a very sensible, conservative treatment so that you retain movement, so you can actually still look surprised and angry and happy and yeah. all the rest of it. But take away enough so the skin doesn't crumple under mm -hmm. the movement. Of the muscle. That makes sense? Yes. Would you say that this is what I have is more of a baby Botox? Baby Botox means a little bit of Botox. Yes. Okay, so yes. Okay. Um, baby Botox, a sprinkling, a small dose, call it what you want, that's what you're going to get. Okay, a little bit of Botox. That's the way I like to do it. I don't like to see frozen people. And you don't no. want to swing from one extreme to the other where it's frozen one day and it's completely uh, scrunching the next day. So a little. A little and often is probably better yeah. than a lot uh, in one go. Absolutely. And then the other thing that we're going to do is drop a little bit of the same drug into this muscle here. You've got this muscle called the masseter. Just you pushing there, I right. can like, feel the you tenderness feel, of it. Right. The masseter is purely a biting muscle. So if you clench down, there. You see how it kicks out like a little, like a little bicep. Men love it. Men love it, <laughs> Men don't love they? It. Like I really want a big. Yes. My brother used to have a, those hand biting. things, yeah. and he put it in his mouth to develop his jaw muscles. That's it, and it's not wrong. It's, it's you know, some people want that wider jawline, but when that muscle becomes very powerful, it can, it can just have a resting tension. It can just be tense all the time. Yeah. And that tension can start to generate uh, aching in the jaw. Um, aching in the teeth, headaches, and so you can take that away to a degree mm -hmm. with Botox. Now it's really important if you do have grinding or uh, pain in your jaw, you don't just go for Botox as the first port of call. Yeah. Make sure you consult a dentist or a doctor to make sure that is the root of the problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if it's appropriate, you can have some Botox. Okay, so we talked about it with you and Botox is suitable for you. Yeah, I was prescribed a um, oral muscle relaxant. Right. But I but even in the tiniest dose, I'm just too sensitive to things like that. And it, I couldn't get up in the morning. Oh, Whereas right. I'm usually like a six AM riser, right. I just wasn't waking up. <laughs> I'm not sensitive. No. Okay, so let's start, shall we? Okay. You ready? Yes. We'll start here in the frowny bit, the mm -hmm. journey. And that's so here you've got a couple of little muscles. 
one there, one here. And what this will treat are the 11 lines. So those vertical lines between the brows. And what this will also do is help to lift the brows in the center. Okay? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Great. That's one. I'll be there. So that's one um, area. area. So yes. you obviously do it per area. And it's usually advisable to keep everything in sync. So treat all the areas in a small dose rather than kill one area dead and then leave its neighbour at full power. Mm -hmm. and that way you'll have a much more natural looking result. Okay, so raise up your eyebrows now. So you've got this muscle in your forehead. And we're going to just calm it down with a few injections. So here, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And here. So these are small dose treatments, uh, injection points, probably one or two minutes at each spot, not much at all. And certainly not enough to paralyze the muscle altogether, but enough to just calm it down and control it. Easy! Yay! You did so well. And the last area that I like to do is around the eyes. Okay? My least favorite. It's thin skin, it can be a bit sensitive, but um, you're going to be okay. Um, it's important that the eyes are not frozen completely. Um, you know, it's important to retain a natural expression, especially when you're smiling. And when, you, when your eyes don't move, uh, when you smile, you can look a little bit sinister. So, you know, we do that. We do it nice and natural. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Big smile. And that's okay. That's okay. A little drop here. A little drop here. This injection here, the tail of the eyebrow, will help to raise the brow up. So you get a nice fresher look around your eyes. And because you've got that little scrunchiness under this eye, we're going to give it an extra little dose just here to calm down that active muscle. Oh, that was just a just mm -hmm. yours. <laughs> okay, done. Done. You're good. You're okay. Yes. You okay? Yes. Should we do the other one? Okay. It's my first time having this one. Okay. So this is really easy and it's very different to the other one. The other one is spread out, sprinkled evenly. This one is just big blobs of Botox. Okay. Back down hard. You feel that muscle kick out. And here we go. One. Straight in. Done. Are you okay? Yeah. Do I still need to bite? I'll tell you when. Okay. Relax and bite. So because this is your first treatment, we're not going to go too crazy with it. Yeah. Give you a, a relatively conservative dose, and we can always have more okay. if we need. Okay, bite down hard. It's that muscle again. And this is, like I said, purely a biting muscle. It doesn't affect facial expression or speaking, smiling, or anything like that. It's purely a biting muscle. So um, it will just relax that movement, but you've got other muscles that help you bite and chew. And they'll compensate for anything that you lose here. There we go. Wow. Is it weird that it feels almost like a release you put in the needle in there? Yeah. Almost like acupuncture. There, there probably will be a little bit of a placebo effect on that. The, effect, the Botox effect doesn't happen. No, it takes a while. Like, yeah. Especially in this big muscle. Yeah. It takes a while for it to weaken and flatten down. But I'm very, very sensitive to this. I'm, I always, yeah, I bet you I'll, be, I'll feel it quicker. That would be great to know. Yeah. So I would expect two weeks to be able to judge the final result and then we can take it from there. Okay, I'll keep you up, up to date with this. Thank you so much. Well done. You did really well. Yay! <laughs> Shock. <laughs> You're longer than the bed. I absolutely schooled you. The bed is too small for you. Look, how are you both going to fit in that? Two, one each. I'm sorry, boys. Mummy's got it all wrong. That's not very good either because it doesn't stand up either, like the sides. That was not what I thought they're it was going to be. Like no, it's a dog bed. It I says know, dog sleeper. Like but maybe it's for like, look, Porter likes it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I needed to size up. Right, I'm back home after my treatment and I'm rushing to get ready. So at this very moment in time, I am 
having a bit of a moment because obviously we talked about it before I had it done, but I wasn't actually going there that day planning to have Botox in my jaw. But I remembered when I was there and I was like, oh yeah, my dentist said that I've got signs of TMJ in my mouth. So do you think it would be good to potentially try some uh, Botox? And, and he felt, felt like, like, oh wow. <gasps> He's so funny. And I'm funny as well, because I am very, very sensitive. I think I've spoken about this on my channel before, and I don't mean sensitive in like the, um, what's the word, like sensitive in the way that I used to be, but I'm sensitive in, like I feel everything, and I can literally feel the difference in my jaw. And I, kept, I was saying to Ali on the way home, I can like, it literally feels like someone's released an elastic band in my jaw. So I'm very, very intrigued to see how, if at all, this affects my headaches because, oh my goodness, it was instant. And I said to him, I was like, I'm really sorry, but I, it, it feels like you put a pin in my jaw and like released something. He's like, well, you know, you don't really experience anything, but I always experience things like way quicker than everyone else because I'm, I am, I hate to say it, and I, I feel like I go on about it a little bit much, but I, I do, I am very in tune with my body and how I feel. I always notice things, and it's what my acupuncturist says, like, I am acutely in tune, and I can feel the difference. I wouldn't say that that's what's gonna happen for everyone, because I know what I'm like, but I can feel the difference. Sorry, it's very dark, it is getting dark in here, so I'm trying to give myself as much light to make myself look nice to go out for drinks. Ali is cooking us dinner, so the sounds of everything smashing in the kitchen is him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really wanted to make that informative, but also without knowing it, I've offered up something different because I know that a lot of you guys from when I've spoken about my headaches, a lot of you have spoken about yours and informed me about like the issues that you've had and I'll keep you up to date with the process. I've actually, because it was such an instant release, I wasn't sure whether I'd already see the effect on my jaw, but I've taken a before because it obviously slims your jaw as well if you are someone that, yeah, I will show you my progress, show you how I get on and, and show you basically how it works. But at the moment, it just generally feels like my jaw is hanging differently. Like it feels like that, but I kept looking in the mirror on the drive home because I'm like, have I got my mouth open? Um, just because it feels so released and the, the softness it's softer on this side at the moment, so I'm guessing that's taken effect quicker. This is still a bit harder. Very excited to see the results of this. Um, and then obviously he spoke through what he did around my eye area and how he corrects my lazy eye, or as he calls it asymmetry, I call it a lazy eye. And uh, I'm trying to get my dressing gown on. Yeah. So a little bit of um, like brow lifting and correcting of asymmetry is what he did. And then also sort of relaxing because I've had a, a line on my forehead from my early teens. And I was like, oh, it's a dehydration line. And I remember when, he, when I said that to him once, he was like, dehydration line, what? <laughs> and it's obviously just where my muscle held my forehead, which created a crease in my forehead. But yeah, we were talking about it afterwards as well. And it was just like, there's, there's so many, like if you're, if you're using skincare, it makes sense to also have Botox because you are aiming for the same result with the skincare. You need the skincare, believe me, you need the skincare. There's also another misconception that if you're like having Botox, you don't need the skincare. No, no, my goodness, you still need the skincare, just like you need the nutrition and you need the hydration, but you're just really kind of maximizing on the results. This is not gonna make you look younger, but it's going to help you in the long run in terms of like fighting aging, which is something that you do with your skincare anyway, is what most people do, unless you're like not using any skincare. So yeah, anyway, I just thought that that would be very, very insightful. And hopefully like, even just speaking to Ayad, like we were just saying about how the misconceptions are there. And I just hope that it gives you sort of a different insight and a different view on things. I'm not saying that you should go and get it done at all. That's totally like a personal preference, but I'm just, letting you know that maybe you it's not what you think it is and um it can be hugely beneficial but like i said i'll pop all of like the stuff that i've looked into in the description box down below i am now getting ready to go out with my friend i still haven't decided what i'm gonna wear so i'm gonna make myself look fresh even fresher and um get ready for a lovely evening out but yeah really excited for my to see what happens with my jaw because if this cures my headaches 
my, I'm, my quality of life is just gonna improve so much. And I can, it means I can also put the one thing like that was the hugest effect on me since co like the, I went through from COVID, not having COVID, but just like the experiences of COVID. I can put it all behind me. So fingers crossed, I will let you know. But I'm very excited. This is my outfit for the evening. I'm wearing the Lydia Millen and Cara Millen leather trousers. These are hands down the most flattering leather trousers in the world. Like the rise on these is everything that you hope for and they're stretchy. So they are so comfortable, perfect crop for a very flattering ankle. Um, I've popped my CDC belt on. I've got a Reese square necked uh, vest, new mini Kelly's first night out, twilly on the wrist, and I've got my Kate blazer as well, and then some Jimmy Choo Maylies, and that is my outfit, just very kind of like casual, but I still feel very me because I've got the Lydia Millen and Cara Millen trousers on, which are just a dream. Oh, I think we're going to do these in some other colours coming up very, very soon, but can we talk about that rise. I just can't, I can't cope. They are so flattering. Anyway, enough of me admiring myself. I'm going to probably swap over to my phone now because this will not fit in the, the small bag. So phone vlogging it is. Good morning, everyone. Oh, it is supposed to be a very, very lovely day today. I'm actually heading down to London for a meeting. Uh, no, for a few meetings. <laughs> for one meeting, no, for four meetings. <laughs> for a few meetings, I don't think it's four, but um, we try and always pack in as many as possible when I'm going into London because it just, it's like a good use of time. And obviously if I'm taking a full day out to go to London, we um, we try and do that. Our meeting today has changed, like this morning has changed. So it's always nice to get in a little bit of mooching. So I think we're gonna head to Harrods and have a look around. I thought I would give you an update on my jaw Botox. So it's been, What's the date date? It's been almost, no, it's been over a week. No, it's a week today, a week today since I had it. And what I would notice is that as my like muscle has relaxed on my face, a tiny amount of bruising, I don't know if you'll be able to, yeah, you can see a little dark patch, tiny amount of bruising has come out. I actually thought that there would be more bruising because of how tight it was there. And that's obviously as it's just, Sort of decrease because also jaw botox is known to like slim the face because where the muscle is constantly contracted when you tense the muscle it tends to enlarge so it could be that um, i'm noticing more softness on this side than on this side still so it usually for the full effects it usually takes like two weeks so i'm not expecting both sides to act at the same time i would say that it has had a huge 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 impact on my headaches i wouldn't say that my headaches are completely gone on. I'm still sort of monitoring things because obviously it hasn't had the full effect yet from what I can understand like I'm still waiting for things to just settle but my painkiller intake has reduced significantly I haven't taken more than one soluble paracetamol per day since I've had this done so that's huge for me because I could take up to like eight of those a day um, on a really really bad day but still that's a lot that's like that's such an improvement for me so I'm really hoping it's going to get better but if not it has the main thing that I would say is that the moment that I had it done it felt like an elastic band had been cut in my jaw and I just felt a huge amount of tension relief both in my jaw my neck and my shoulders like the back of my neck which it's really interesting how much of the tension here was um, migrating all over this area. I feel a lot looser, I feel a lot more relaxed, and so it really has made such a difference. I kind of wish I'd done it sooner. But the thing is, is when someone says something flippantly, like, oh, you've got signs of TMJ in your mouth, I'm like, okay, what do I do with that? Who do I go to that? Like, you're the mouth guy, so surely you know if there's, if I've got TMJ, who do I go to? Um, so this was just sort of like a stab in the dark that I thought I'd try impulsively and amazingly so far it's working obviously my diet i have for the most part done my absolute best to continue eating the way i was when i was in the maldives so just making better choices but still not depriving myself just not having it all the time so i definitely added lots more goodness to our fridge and our pantry 
Um, one of the things is deliciously edibles, like they are my favorite thing to have with a coffee and um, other than a biscotti, but um, but they are such a great snack for grabbing and like just curbing any sort of like snack needing rather than going for the crisps or the chocolate or whatever. They're dense in calories, which is great for energy, but yeah, just I'm, I'm just having such a great sort of run with it. And I think that getting more water, eating a lot better, eating a lot like better foods has been probably helping as well but I think the biggest shock has been this so I am just kind of getting used to everything and like looking at my bags and being like oh I don't need to have a hundred paracetamol in there just in case I get a headache but still it's um yeah it's good so anyway today in London we've got meetings first meeting is with a um, fine jewelry brand that I love and like have worked with previously and also I'm a customer of so we're meeting them we're just basically going to pot around Harris beforehand as well and yeah should be a nice day it's supposed to be be a beautiful day in london today so i am wearing to show you my outfit i am wearing quite possibly the best basic dress i think i've ever owned this is like the equivalent of a tank top but in a dress form so this is from theory and i'm working with them on instagram so hopefully when this is live my code will be live as well so that you can shop things with my discount I'll pop all of the details either on screen or in the description box down below. Basically, this is like a ribbed top, so it's really nicely fitted and flattering. Almost a square neckline. It's kind of like a squoval neckline um, and big straps, nice and supportive, but then the actual skirt is like cotton poplin, so it has great structure to it, not too heavy. A beautiful midi length as well. I've added my CDC belt twilly, which is just becoming a little bit of a staple, isn't it? and obviously necklace free at the moment. I think I might look for a necklace today seeing as we're meeting with um, a lovely jewelry brand as well. So I think I might have a look in that sort of vicinity. But yeah, this is just a bit of a basic, but it is chilly this morning. So what I'm gonna do is pop this Vince cardigan, which is like the only cute cropped cardigan that I've got. And I'm gonna wear this over my shoulders for the most part of the day, but as it warms up, I will just take it off and go about my business as I sort of should be. I feel like the fronts of my hair are a bit sort of wonky at the moment. I need them to, to chill their beans because um, they've got, let's just go like that, shall we? Whichever, whichever is best. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna get in my taxi and head down to London. Oh, I didn't tell you what other items I'm wearing though. So yeah, this is the look. It's just an easy cardigan to throw over my shoulders. Uh, then I've got my Manolo Blahnik pointed toe flats a little Masika anklet that I wear every year, Mini Kelly, and uh, that's about it for the day. So we're gonna head down to London. We've already been lost like so many times, so fingers crossed we find what we're looking for. Well, damage is already done. We've just been to Louis Vuitton and picked up something that I've wanted for my dressing table for a long time. Right, we are just on our way to the first meeting of the day. I've actually picked up some good bits in Harrods, um, bits I needed, but also some bits from Hermes Beauty that I wanted to try because it looks like they've got some really nice lip oils in for summer and there's been a blush that I've been trying to get. I tried to pick it up in the duty free on the way to the Maldives and they didn't even have Hermes Beauty there. So um, I was uh, on the hunt and I got it. And so now I'm happy, very happy. Can't wait to try them. I hope they're good. Hopefully this is our first stop and our taxi driver just said, is it a liquid lunch? And I said, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks, love. Never walked up the centre of Regent Street. <laughs> this is your cat walk. Yeah, this is my cat walk. 
Morning everyone, I am coming back at you after taking a little bit of the weekend off. So um, Friday obviously we were in London and I did some shopping in London obviously because doing some shopping in London makes me very very happy. Um, but it was just a really lovely day in London and then we finished off having drinks with, with the girls from Rodeal and um, that was so so lovely. We went to Berners Tavern and it was such good fun. and. Um, we came home and finished things off by having a little um, pizza by the fire pit in our garden and it was such a perfect evening. I do need to work out how to stop it from smoking though because it is quite a smoky one. But I think that's when it's not got good flames and it doesn't burn off the smoke. But anyway, um, it was a lovely evening. And then on the Saturday, we ended up going for a wine walk in the countryside where we live and it really was like, we picked like the perfect day. The weather was incredible. Like the most beautiful day ever. Like seriously, I can't get over how perfect it was. And it was actually one of the more shorter walks that we do. Usually we do about 30K um, because we're training for a walk that we're doing for charity. So we do go quite far usually, but this time I think we ended up doing much less than that and kept it quite close to the vicinity where I live and we went to went to a pub in my village had a drink there then stopped off en route to the next pub and had a glass of wine in the field there and had our sandwiches and our crisps and then we went to the next pub which is in one of the villages uh, just over the road from our village and had a drink there and then we walked from there to another village and had some chips and a drink there and then we stopped off in the field on the, our way to the last pub which is the plough which is one of my favorite pubs and um, we had a drink en route there and to say that it was the most beautiful like walk we've ever done genuinely it wasn't the longest but my goodness, I think it was something to do with like the season as well, because it's like, it's not summer yet, it's spring, but we've been having showers. So everything was exceptionally like luscious and all of the flowers were super healthy. The trees were super healthy. And, oh, if I can insert any footage, I will, but otherwise I've posted loads of it over on my Instagram. So, um, and I just didn't want to do like any, I didn't want to do any vlogging that day because I just wanted to enjoy myself and be a little bit woozy and just, yeah, it was wonderful. And then yesterday it was miserable, like absolutely miserable. Ali got back from Ireland yesterday and it was so miserable. I, I was genuinely like, what on earth is this weather? How could it have been? I think it was like 26 or 27 degrees yesterday. And then today it was, well, yesterday it was miserable. Anyway, we ended up going to the garden center because I was on the lookout to get um, some more flowers for the pots in our house. Um, the saxifra, fra, saxifraga, saxifraga, saxifraga. Um, that I got before has actually done really well. What I started doing was I had like a rotation of pots. So I put some back outside because they didn't do exceptionally well indoors, but um, if I would put them outside, they'd be better. Uh, so that worked really well. But the one that I actually really want to try, and this is one of my favorite, I think I have, I only have a few favorite flowers, which is quite hard to say when it comes to my garden because I'm not huge on like picking flowers if that makes sense. I actually just like things living and I know we've spoken about this a lot, but there are a few that I absolutely love. So specifically David Austin roses, like I think David Austin roses are the most elegant thing ever. And we've got loads of them in our garden already. I actually want to incorporate some more climbing roses, um, which I think will look really lovely around the house. Um, then wisteria, obviously, because I planted loads of wisteria like two years ago, and now we're seeing the fruits of our labor. Um, the other one is hydrangea annabelle because it has that pom-pom flower, um, but it's easier to maintain. I think I always got quite annoyed at like hydrangeas because they were just so temperamental. Um, but the other one, which is by far, like I actually cannot cope with how much I love this. Obviously all of the wildflower, like the cow parsley, wildflower is always my favorite, but this one, and I think it might be a wildflower. I think it just, 
becomes wild, but it's called, oh, I think it's like Origeron. Basically what they are is they're like almost like little daisies, but they grow in cracks. And so if you have like steps and things like that or walls, you can actually, they can grow through those. And they look like little bits of confetti but it's like really, really delicate and they're just ground spreaders. So I wanted to try and get some of those for the pots in my bedroom, uh, in my dressing room, sorry. And I also picked up some um, white Cosmos. There was only one pot left, which unfortunately meant that everyone else had obviously probably had the same idea because um, I don't like the colored Cosmos. I only like white Cosmos. So I bought those and I'm, I'm gonna try potting them up and see if, see if they work in my dressing room. But yeah, so we went on a little adventure yesterday and then I just spent some time potting. I potted up my cucumbers and my greenhouse is just looking so wonderful. But I wanted to show you what I bought. First of all, I spent 170, 172 pounds in Harrods on beauty. I um, picked up three items from the Hermes beauty collection. Um, I have actually already unboxed it over on my TikTok, uh, which by the way, I have, I decided what I wanted to do with my TikTok and I wasn't gonna sit here and moan about it anymore. I, I wasn't gonna um, try and like make a square peg fit a round hole. I decided to be the change that I wanted to see in the platform. So I'm just gonna be posting the things that I love, whether it's my outfits, whether it's shots of my greenhouse or my house, whether it's something new that I've bought. So I'm just gonna be posting little tidbits, but I'm, I'm kind of like taking it a lot more carefree than I do my Instagram. My Instagram is like my, it's like my curation and I love Instagram so much. Like I love curating my feed and just having fun with it. So yeah, anyway, 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 anyway. I picked up, this is one that I wanted to pick up at Duty Free and they didn't have it at Duty Free. And even the guy, when I asked him, because I went to the fragrance stand for Hermes, they were like, we've literally had so many people asking us. So I think I'm gonna have to feedback that we need to get the beauty. But I wanted to pick up the um, Hermes Blush, Blush Blush in Rose Blush. Because it says Rose, but I would say that that is more corally see it looks a bit pinkier on screen but it's actually I think it's a bit corallier but it goes very nicely with this dress um but yeah I wanted a nice summer blush and this is the packaging Look at that beautiful uh gold disc there then I picked up this which I haven't even tried yet I'm going to test drive them individually on my TikTok this is like the new the newest launch I think I don't know what it is because I cannot read that, but I really, really loved this color. It was, I, I, I want to put it on my lips right now. This is their lip oils. Um, and this is shade Coralie Brigarade. So I, I picked that up. There was a um, lipstick that I wanted as well, but it was their limited edition one and it had sold out. I was very gutted about that. And then I picked up their base, which is a natural enhancing complexion balm. Again, I haven't tried it yet. This is their shade Cien. Cien? Number 60. I thought I was kind of between two shades, but I wanted to try this out anyway. So I picked that up. And the next thing that I picked up was um, a new vanity case. Because if you didn't see my Lydia Millen and uh, Elizabeth Arden, which I did like five years ago, the mirror smashed in it and it actually had like shattered so there was bits of glass like everywhere and it was really really it was quite bad so i couldn't get all of it out pretty much um and i've been meaning to get a new vanity anyway this one doesn't have a mirror but it will look nice on my dressing table and generally i pack a little compact anyway nowadays so i picked this up and i also am watching something else so basically i'm really wanting to steal one of my uh, antique louis vuitton trunks because i've got one in the living room and then one of them has been strategically placed in uh, mr Millen gordon's office and obviously i'm very happy that he has it but i don't want to have to justify getting another big one because they are expensive i love the old ones like I, the, the way they smell it's just wonderful but I would love to have it there like at the end of my dressing table island and um I just think it would look really nice and I don't ever use the buffet in terms of sitting on it so it doesn't really matter anyway I also want to get a vintage antique 
jewellery box. Like, as if it's like a, a trunk as well, like a mini trunk to go on one of the shelves because I think it would complement the um, aesthetic in here really nicely. So then this would look lovely on my dressing table. And I just think in terms of luggage, like Louis Vuitton does the best luggage, always. And this will also hopefully help me edit down my makeup as well because at the moment it's got a little bit out of hand, but ooh, I picked up the niece or the nice, the niece, I think it would, would be niece. I've also got the big vintage one that I picked up from uh, Designer Exchange, but this one is much better for like my makeup, whereas I would use that one for like toiletries, although to be honest, I love it so much, I don't use it. I just have it on display because it is a work of art in itself. Um, but yeah, so I picked this up and I think that as this ages, because I actually love it when this goes that rich honey uh, shade of brown, it will look really lovely in the room. Um, my bruise has now gone on the side of my face. I definitely, do you know what? I think I might be able to take a little bit more on this side of my face um, because I think this is like the worst worst hit side of my jaw in terms of like my clenching and my TMJ. So I reckon I could take a little bit more here because this one still feels a little bit tense. Whereas this one, it might still take time to, to kick in because I'm still a week and a half like post having it done. Um, and it should take longer as we discussed, but this side, and I have definitely noticed a um, huge improvement. It's not completely gone. I'm hoping that over time, as my muscles relax and calm down, it will just get better and better. But for the most part, this is the most progress that I have had with my headaches in two years. And it's emotional, genuinely. Like this is so gorgeous, this fabric. The silk cotton that Karen Millen does, it's unreal. In fact, I'm gonna show you the dress because it's beautiful. I showed you the other one in a previous video, but the fullness in this skirt, <gasps> wow, like look at that. And the, the prints themselves are literally a dream. The amount of fabric through here, even the structure on the, the shoulders is gorgeous but look at that skirt. I'm in love, I'm in love. Also, Ken and Graham were busy over the weekend and painted our upstairs hallway. It just makes this space feel a little bit better and connected with the rest of the hallway downstairs. And it just felt like this was quite an easy fix in order to bring it into the rest of the house. Obviously up here, um, it feels like we can take, like we can make little changes and it brings it into the rest of the house. I feel like this floor will almost be able to tackle on our own um, to a certain extent, but uh, yes, we've changed the color. It was pure white, which was very, very stark. And I was a little bit worried because I did think it might make it a bit dark up here. Obviously all of the windows up here are like the eaves. You can really see an accurate depiction of how white it was versus the colour now, although it's a bit sunny. Um, this is being painted later on. The colour we've used is drop cloth from Far and Born. That's the colour that we've used throughout our hallways. We did go for drop cloth on the ceiling as well because it's in the eaves. I just think it looks a lot more seamless up here. And then we've got our little botanical um, I think they're called like Herbor Herborian or something like that, but we got these from uh, Burford, but I just think it looks really, really nice up here and they suit this area absolutely perfectly. The only thing that we need to do is change the handles on the doors. We need to get the, from the anvil handles that we've got downstairs, because honestly, they make such a difference to the feel of the doors and also the feel of the space. So I'm gonna get three sets of those ordered, ready to pretty much finish off this area. I think what I would like to do is get something for this corner, whether it's like a stack of old trunks or suitcases, or whether it's like a table with a plant on it or something like that. Maybe there could be a stack of old suitcases there. I've always just felt a little bit sort of unsure of what to do with this particular space here. Um, it's just not somewhere that we're ever gonna use. I remember people used to suggest putting like um, a seating area, maybe some bookcases, but of all of the places in this house, I'm never gonna sit here. <laughs> I'm gonna sit in the lovely living room or in the um, games room downstairs or outside. So yeah, 
but I love how it looks with this um, carpet. This carpet is such a dream, like genuinely. If I could have this carpet throughout the whole house, I would. I love it so, so much. Now, what I'm thinking about doing here is I've got some old um, antique soil sieves that I picked up from Setu. I've got one smaller one and one bigger one, so I thought maybe we could try those on this wall here just to make a bit of a feature of it, and I just love the feel of them, but I haven't tried them out yet, so um, they're not up on the wall. But for the most part, it's looking really nice. I was actually going to take you out to the garden and show you what I did over the weekend, but I'm thinking that this video is already gonna be pretty long, so I'm going to leave the vlog here, and I will see you guys in my next one because there's lots to chat about, so bye.